A day after the president sent his budget to Congress, several key proposals were hot topics among lawmakers in both parties. This is two million plus. Liberal and progressive leaders rallied outside the Capitol this afternoon, sounding off against the president's decision to curb some entitlement program spending in his budget proposal. We've stood with you. It's time for you to stand with the seniors of this country. It's time for you to stand on their side and say that we're not going to tolerate a benefits cut. Two changes in particular have irked many on the political left. One is the president's willingness to adopt a new measure of inflation for the government known as the Change Consumer Price Index. It would reduce future benefits to Social Security recipients, military veterans and civilian federal employees. At the end of the president year, himself expressed reservations yesterday, but he said he made the offer to bring Republicans to the negotiating table. And I don't believe that all these ideas are optimal, but I'm willing to accept them as part of a compromise. If and only if they contain protections for the most vulnerable Americans. That did not stop Democrats like Congressman Mark Pocan of Wisconsin from pressing the acting budget director Jeff Zients today at a House hearing. And I called my mother, I woke her up this morning to ask her exactly what she makes on Social Security per month. She's 84, I uh, grew up in a lower middle class uh, family, uh, they have a modest home, but she gets 1101 a month at 84. And then I went through some of her bills with her and where she's at in her savings. Uh, it's just not a lot. And to try to address Social Security in that way, to me, seems to be breaking our promise to seniors. The president, as part of a balanced, comprehensive deficit reduction package, uh, included CPI. The other condition, however, is to protect the most vulnerable, including people like your mother, older Social Security beneficiaries. The budget also contains $400 billion in savings from Medicare and other federal health programs. Those would be achieved through lower payments to health care providers and drug companies and by requiring wealthier Medicare recipients to pay higher premiums. Medicare for In his remarks yesterday, the president also sought to allay concerns about, about the Medicare potential Medicare. effects of those reforms. We'll reduce our government's Medicare bills by finding new ways to reduce the cost of health care, not by shifting the cost to seniors or the poor or families with disabilities. They are reforms that keep the promise we've made to our seniors, basic security that is rock solid and dependable and there for you when you need it. I believe we can Back at today's that hearing, that the chair of the House Budget that, Committee, Republican like Paul Ryan, uh, said the plan that. represents a good first step, but does not Having go far that. enough. The president does deserve credit for challenging his party on entitlements. Unfortunately, uh, the budget does not include the structural reforms that we need to protect and strengthen critical health and retirement security programs. These policy changes in this budget won't save these programs. They'll make them a little less expensive, but they still go bankrupt. House Speaker John Boehner, meanwhile, rejected the president's demands for close to a trillion dollars in new revenues. The uh, president calls this his compromise budget, but his bottom line is this, my way or the highway. Uh, and if that's the case, I'm not very optimistic. Families and Still, Treasury Secretary Jack Lew positions. said today and, the administration uh, is optimistic a budget deal can be reached this standard. year. And we look at this more closely now with Jared Bernstein. He served as chief economist and advisor to Vice President Biden from 2009 to 2011 and is now a senior fellow at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. Max Richmond is president for the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare, an advocacy group. And Joseph Antos is an economist at the American Enterprise Institute, whose research includes Medicare and health care system reform. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Jared, first of all, I'll start with Social Security in this chained CPI. Explain that to us. And want to jump right in, huh? Yes. Well, how is it different sure. from the way things are done? Well, the punchline is that the chain CPI grows a bit more slowly than the CPI that's currently used. Now, Social Security benefits are adjusted for price increases. They're adjusted with the consumer price index. Mm -hmm. But for reasons that have to do with uh, most economists, and myself included, view a, a slightly better, more realistic way of estimating how people actually respond to price changes, this chain measure does a better job of capturing uh, inflation, and it grows more slowly. Now, that said, um, there are critics, and, and by the way, that means that your real Social Security benefit goes up less because it's adjusted by a, a different deflationary measure. Now, let me just be clear, though. And there's the rub. There, there, there's, there's rub number one. Uh -huh. Rub number two, which I think is also an important rub, 
is that uh, the, the prices that elderly people face are different than the prices that the rest of us face. They face more medical costs. They pay more out of pocket for medical costs. So, so while the chain CPI is a more accurate measure of inflation overall, it's probably not more accurate for elderly people. All right, Max Richmond, you, you hate this idea. Right. That's an understatement. Okay. <laughs> Explain. Well, rub, rub number three is that the current formula the, that's being used, the consumer price index that's under current law, that is inadequate. It does not take into account uh, enough of the uh, goods and services Jared's talked about that seniors rely on. So not enough weight is given on health care costs, out-of-pocket costs. You know, Medicare is a great program. It doesn't cover uh, uh, dental care, vision care. Uh, uh, hearing aids and out-of-pocket costs which go up contrary to what the president said a lot of out-of-pocket costs are going up under his proposal so the current formula is bad doesn't keep up with inflation so they don't get enough seniors they don't, don't get, get enough, enough cost in, uh, cost of living increase now, now. You're saying. and so we're gonna now tell seniors that inadequate uh, COLA you've been getting you got zero for two out of the last four years that was too generous we, we've devised a better way not myself, but in Washington, and your coal is going to be in, uh, even smaller. So we're going to go from a, a flawed, inadequate adjustment for inflation to an even worse uh, formula. Can you make a case for uh, why this is a good move? Uh, well, let, let's be clear that uh, if inflation is zero, which it has been for the last uh, couple of years, uh, seniors are not going to see a reduction uh, in their Social Security payments. So let's, let's not panic about that. I hope not. Uh, it's illegal. Uh, the, the fact is, however, that Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid are, are the key drivers of our overall fiscal uh, problems. Uh, Max is right. This, this represents a cut in payments. It's a slow cut in payments. It's not a gigantic reduction all at once. A few tenths per year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, what it basically says is if, if we went back into a normal economy and we had, say, 2% inflation, instead of getting, uh, say, $200 uh, raise uh, on a $10,000 uh, Social Security payment, uh, you'd get $150. The loss of $50 means something, but the increase also means something. But the question is, does it make sense as a way to deal, one of the ways to deal with this large problem that we have out I there. think the only way it makes sense, and, and here uh, the president agrees strongly with what I'm about to say, I think the only way it makes sense as a, an adjustment to Social Security is if you make sure that you offset some of the problems that, that Max and, and Joe just mentioned. And what, what the president is proposing, this, this part maybe hasn't been reported quite enough, is, is something called a benefit enhancement or a bump up starting after about 10 years of being on Social Security. So you do take that hit that we just talked about in terms of the smaller increases uh, for, for, for about a decade. Uh, there's a bump up which will ultimately, after uh, uh, 10 years, amount to 5% of the average benefit, which is about $750. So the president proposing, yes, we think we should do this for a variety of reasons, not least of which is to bring Republicans to the table for other reasons, but we're going to try to offset the benefit losses so with a bump up. Some protection. It's a benefit enhancement to protect some of the folks that we worry well, I about. I wonder if I could just comment yeah, on ahead. that, uh, because this is being sold, uh, peddled, as more, a more, this chain CPI, as a more accurate measure <laughs> of inflation, all right? It's not ac more accurate for seniors, but it, it is being uh, presented as more accurate. If it's accurate, why do you need a bump? There's something wrong with the formula. If, uh, if, this, if the COLA is supposed to keep up with inflation, you wouldn't need that. But I also wanted, yeah. uh, you didn't go here, but I want to make this, uh, this observation. We shouldn't even be here talking about this. I'm glad to be on your Actually, show. Actually, that's why, that's where I want to go. All right. Because I mean, that's the larger question. That is here. the larger question. Is Social Security, should it be part of this? It should not. It should not. Uh, because? Because it did not create the deficit, hasn't added a dime to the deficit, uh, the, uh, the debt or the annual deficit, has a surplus of $2.7 trillion, is, is sound, and Jared knows this, for the next 20 years, not according to Jared, Max, anyone here is able to pay full benefits for the next 20 years. Then there's a shortfall that needs to be addressed. We don't need to solve that today or in the next, uh, in the next two months. It, we have time to do that. It shouldn't be part of the debate. And I was gratified today to see uh, Senator Max Baucus at a hearing uh, say, 
this shouldn't be, uh, this change should not be part of the discussion on debt negotiations. I was uh, gratified to hear Leader Pelosi wonder why it's part of this uh, uh, budget proposal. So I think we're making some progress. All right. Should it be part of the debate? Uh, we, we can't wait 20 years and then decide we've got an emergency. This has, of course, been uh, the, the tendency of policymakers to put off the pain until later. The fact is that we should be making reasonable reforms to encourage people to save more for their retirement. And 20 years is just about the right amount of time for people to get ready for reality. Uh, the, the fact is that uh, uh, this, is a, this is a budget hit. This is not a reform of Social Security. There's no question about that. What we need to do is we need to provide incentives for people to stay on the job longer if they are able-bodied and able-minded and, and able-minded and we're living longer and we're living healthier. Look, I, I think, to, just to be clear here, it, it's quite uh, obvious that the president put the uh, chain CPI in his budget uh, because he wants to bring Republicans to the table on this key issue of uh, revenues, of new tax well, revenues. Well, that's right, but he is, he is implicitly or even explicitly making a case the one you don't want, that it should be part of the discussion. No, I think he is, and I think that uh, he's doing so in such a way with this benefit enhancement, this bump up that mm -hmm. tries to offset it. He himself, I, I think in his commentary, has said this isn't exactly the way I'd like to go. But we have to move forward, and we also have to be concerned, and this, maybe Max and I depart a bit on this point. While I take your point on Social Security, when it comes to achieving a sustainable budget picture in the long run, uh, that has to involve uh, slowing the growth of health costs. Mm -hmm. And there the president also has significant uh, cuts in the budget, about $400 billion from Medicare and Medicaid, largely from Medicare, largely on the delivery side. A point that we haven't made yet, and this, this gets to some things Max has said, the typical beneficiary of Medicare and Social Security has an income of about 25000 so when we start fooling around with these kinds of adjustments and cuts, let's be mindful of not hurting these economically vulnerable folks. Medicare, Joe Antos, you, 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 you scoffed when he said <laughs> this was a significant uh, reform. It's not a significant reform. It's, it, it's a replay of last year's budget mm -hmm. with minor tweaks. Last year's uh, budget proposal from the president did not substantially reform the Medicare program. The fact is that the $400 billion of cuts are, are offset by $250 billion worth of additional spending that the president assumes uh, it will take place uh, in the Medicare program. So we're not talking about... Well, so here we have a disagreement. I mean, here, here's, here's a fact. If you look back at the Congressional Budget Office projection of Medicare costs over the next 10 years, uh, uh, and, and you look back a couple of years ago, you look at today, that projection is down by $500 billion. That means some of the changes that we and the healthcare industry have implemented, including things the president has brought to the table, mm -hmm. have actually already slowed the growth of health care costs. So I disagree with Joe on that. I do think that the Affordable Care Act has, uh, has resulted in considerable savings. Some of the uh, savings have not even been implemented yet. So let's give that a chance to work. But you know, keep in mind here, we're talking about Social Security and Medicare. We're talking about retirement security. As Jared said, uh, about half of seniors right now uh, uh, receive about $22,000 a year uh, uh, in income. So we're asking them to get less and to pay more. Right. Pay more for premiums, deductibles, co-payments, more for out-of-pocket costs. Briefly, brief last word. Okay, so the key here is that we have to have real reform. Real reform means that people change the way they behave. In the case of Medicare, the beneficiaries change the way they behave and, and uh, the health sector changes the way it behaves. There is literally nothing in the president's budget that has that kind of an effect. Oh, I, I, let me just I know that was the last <laughs> word, but that is just factually incorrect. I mean, there, you said it a little bit in your introduction, bundled payments, uh, better that's not negotiation. In, that's, not in, that's not in the president's budget. It is. That was passed. Right. That was passed. Okay, very big subject, short yeah. amount of time, but I promise you will continue. Jared Bernstein, Joe Antos, and Max Richmond. Thank you, thank so you all. Thank you. thank you. And online, we invite.